Okay, so yes, uh, thanks for joining everyone. Um, so today we're looking at our Cisco threat hunting uh, workshops. This is a, a sort of a, a mixture of a, some sort of uh, information and sort of uh, content for you to sort of learn from initially, followed by a, a technical session where we're going to hold some labs. You could actually play with some of the, the technology we're discussing today. Um, so this is aimed at more of our technical people. So in terms of the agenda, so we're obviously at the beginning of the session now. So we've got 45 minutes initially, um, uh, sort of an overview of the, the, the solution and how it works. Um, that's been presented by Nilesh from Cisco. Then got a short break. So anyone that's not uh, on the technical side of things, um, obviously at that point, uh, please feel free to leave and um, and, and head off. Um, straight after that, we've got 15 minute breaks to grab drinks and things. Uh, we we'll are then kick into the tech labs. So that's where we're going to run through all of the, the technology and actually see it in action. Um, so that one's uh, being uh, presented by Michael from Tech Data and Amar from Cisco. And then at the very end, we've got uh, just some sort of uh, Q&A and sort of wrap up session. So in terms of um, uh, just how the, the system uses, uh, works today, so we've got uh, on the right hand side of your screen, uh, it may be compressed if you've uh, um, sort of uh, moved it over to the right, so you can expand that and you should see some options. There you can see a section for questions and also audio controls. So um, throughout the event, uh, everyone will be on mute as normal. So you won't be able to uh, sort of talk directly to us, but you should hear the presenters obviously okay. Um, if you've got any questions you'd like to ask at any time, please feel free to do ask them. Um, if you ask that question, then I'll come through to all the presenters and then we can either stop at a convenient point uh, or at the very end, it's also going to be a sort of dedicated section for Q&A too. So just to confirm, the event is going to be recorded. Um, also, this, any slide content we're going to show you initially will be shared. So um, feel free to make notes and things as you wish, but you also will get the information afterwards that will come out of our email. Um, and if there's any issues, if anyone can't hear anything or you know, the screens are frozen, like that, please do either use the raise a hand feature, um, which is the little hand icon on the on the button bar there, or uh, ask a question and we can uh, make sure we, we, we sort of look at that quickly for you. Um, everyone should hopefully receive some vouchers for lunch. So um, uh, remember to put yourself some food. So um, it's, uh, yeah, with the day, uh, virtual events we have to do these days, it's a, a nice way of getting something to sort of give you some lunch too. So. So this is a quick summary. Um, hopefully, uh, many of you will know who Ultima are on the, on the call, but just in case anyone doesn't, so um, Ultima are a long-running Cisco uh, premier partner. Um, so we've been with Cisco for a number of years, um, you know, covering their full Cisco stack, uh, networking, security, data center collaboration, all the different areas that Cisco are working. Uh, we've got an in-house professional services team right up to CCI level of uh, sort of technical knowledge, and we cover pre-sales, licensing, you know, anything everyone's looking for really. Um, and obviously today's focus is Cisco security. So this kind of is part of the wider uh, Cisco security portfolio. Um, and anyone who's keeping up to date with the latest things that are going on in the industry, um, big launch that happened just last week around SecureX, which is one of the new um, sort of solutions that's being launched. So we, we may be covering a little bit of that today. But um, yeah, lots, lots happening in security. So obviously the purpose of today is to, to sort of highlight some of the new things that are happening, uh, give you an introduction to it, sort of more of a technical level as well as just a product level. Um, and hopefully it'll sort of, you know, if there's any questions or anything comes along, then please feel free to ask. So I'm going to hand over to Nilesh now, who's going to start off the um, initial piece. Um, and then uh, we go from there. Over to you, Nilesh. Hi, good morning. Apologies for the delay. Uh, slight audio problem there. I do apologize. Um, welcome today and uh, thank you for joining us. My name is uh, Nilesh Alai and I'm one of the cloud security specialists. And I'll be taking you through our breach defense portfolio today and uh, show you what breach defense is, what we're hearing from our customers, um, and obviously some of the tools that we have within Cisco uh, in terms of how we can help you with breach defense or investigating a breach. So a couple of things. Um, first of all, what is a breach? Um, and here's a quick definition of a breach, when an attacker gains access to a device or data, essentially. 
There's a couple of questions we'll start off with, like how does your organization stop breaches attempts today? Think about what your answer would be. How fast would you be able to react? How confident would your answer be back to the business? Also think about how many people in your organization are responsible for breach defense. Are they within your office location? Are they multinational? Are they across the other side of the pond? Um, all these different departments that you may have to work with. Think about who would be responsible in your organization at breach defense. There are many roles within your organization. We can talk about these roles today in a bit more detail and each person and the benefits that each person will get from breach defense. If you think about it, in a large organization, this could be all these different roles, could be 200 people um, carrying these different roles. In a small organization, this could be one or two people, but these roles and responsibilities still exist within an organization. And it's all these different roles which are responsible for breach defense, ensuring our business and organization is protected. So if we think about breach defense in a little bit more detail, um, for all of these roles, breach defense is a minute by minute, hour by finish line. It's an ongoing effort. If you don't get breached today, well done. You get to do all over again tomorrow. It's an ongoing effort. There's no finishing line as part of that. So breach defense, does that just equal blocking? Cisco has a great blocking story and we have leading technology in that we can talk about, but this is not the whole story. We need to gain control and get ahead of the attacks Gain control and see evidence if there has been an attack in our environment. But then how do you gain control? So let's simulate an incident. It's 7.43 a.m. on a Tuesday morning. You get a text message from a CEO, a couple of missed calls, and you're wondering what's going on. And suddenly, as soon as I see this on my phone, I know there's some trouble there, right? so I'll try to hide my phone. But eventually, you'll get around to looking at your phone and see what's going on. You open your phone and uh, you've got this the NSB knowledge. What do we know about this? And this could be any threat, like something the CEO or someone in the organization, the board have something seen in the news, uh, or they've seen it with their golf buddies, uh, and they want to know does this affect us? Like, how, how does it affect us? And DNS I did one of these. And the answer on this could be anything, right? Like, how, how do we know? How do we know as soon as we've got a text message, are we affected by this? Um, so essentially, you'd have to go back with hang on tight, um, and obviously, it's an unconfident answer. So whatever role you're in, this is a challenge for you, and you need to understand what we're dealing with first. Are we blocking it, and has it been in my environment? So the first thing we will do, um, and whatever role you're in, uh, obviously, this is a big question mark, uh, and no matter how, uh, whoever you ask, any small or large organization, any large enterprise, the first thing everyone does is Google this. What is this all about? What is DNS knowledge and learn more about this. You'll come across loads of different posts. There'll be different blog posts, there'll be news articles, all sorts of information online. You may come across a blog post by Cisco. Cisco Talos is our threat research agency. It's the largest commercial threat uh, intelligence agency in the world. Um, and we blog, blog post about all these different types of threats. So you may come across a Talos blog post. There'll be loads of information on there. There'll be uh, tons of information in terms of executive summary, um, how the payload happens, how this could be delivered. Um, so there's tons of different information. And you'll get down to information at the bottom, stuff like um, what we call intelligence as part of this. And this could be um, indicators of compromise. And you'll find this a lot in different types of threats and different types of feeds that you see from different vendors. Um, these are signatures, essentially, of what we can see as part of this particular threat and what to look out for in our environment. Now these are useful, so you can take this information, but essentially what you'd have to do is take this information and then take this to your different tools that you have. So you'll take that to your firewall tools, you can then take those to your endpoint security, you take it to your web security, you take it to your antivirus, you've got all these different consoles that you could take these intelligence into and see have we seen these signatures anywhere in our environment. And bear in mind all this time, while we can't go back to the business with a confident answer. So essentially, you're having to research, look around, what's going on. And then all this time, you're having to have to tell the organization, the CEO, I'm still looking into it. And bear in mind, because we have these multiple consoles, that gives us multiple opinions. Like different vendor technologies give you different opinions as part of different solutions. Everyone uses slightly different naming conventions. So you've got all these different um, opinions and confusion as what's going on in that environment. And to that fact, uh, there's third party research. Um, <clears throat> and when there's been a compromise, if there's a compromise, on average, it takes up to 66 days before you can eradicate a threat from the environment. Up until then, bear in mind, you're going back to the business and saying, not yet, not yet, I don't know what's going on. And obviously you haven't got that confident answer. 
And this is where Cisco comes into, and I'll show you what we're doing around this. So bridge defense, does that equal just blocking? No, it doesn't. There's a lot more to it. Firstly, you need time, time to research your threats, to identify are your tools blocking them. Then you need expertise. Expertise is also a challenge. What are you doing in your environment? They have to be expertise in different threats, but also an expertise in your environment. Do they know your environment inside out? And then lastly, evidence. Does it exist or not? You need a definitive answer to this or a definitive action. And these are the challenges that we hear from loads of our C-level customers all the time. That time, we need more time. If we had all the time in the world, we could find these threads. We could get and learn, we can upskill on this. But obviously time is an issue always, right? So we need to find new ways to help your team to be more efficient as part of this. Expertise, skill shortages around three and a half million in cybersecurity roles remain unfilled in 2021, by 2021. And not just expertise in terms of the skill set, but will they also have to be an expert in all those different multiple solutions that you have within the organization? And so that's a real challenge as well. We'll talk about that in a bit more detail. And then lastly, the evidence, that digging for the answer. So because of the many different security solutions, it isn't doing us any favors to get those multiple alerts, uh, multiple consoles, multiple opinions, making it harder to keep pace with these threats and issues that are constantly involved. So these are the threats that we'll look at, and these are the challenges that we'll look at in order to, how do we get the right defensive um, to have the critical availability in the cloud, at the applications, and across internet traffic and the endpoints. And these are the big three that we talk about within Cisco. Internet, the number one source of attack. This is where the attacks are staged. This is where the source of most of the attacks happen, and they're launched from. Email, the number one threat vector. 96% of data breaches start with email. Business email compromise, phishing, ransomware, malware, it's all email. And then the endpoint, the number one target for attacks. These are the, where the attackers want to get to and then obviously move on from there. And we can help cover all of these and more. So it's not just about having these three different solutions in place, but it's how do these work together? How they're working together to help your team. So if you think about it, if an attack comes from all different angles, if we can identify a threat on our email security, for example, why are we not using that intelligence on our web security? So if you've seen a phishing link, for example, on email, we could use that intelligence to protect our web security, like don't click, we're trying to click on a phishing link, block that domain, for example. And this is where that coordinated effort comes into it. And if you imagine coordinated security, a bit like air traffic control. So if we don't have this coordinated traffic, it's put it a little bit like flying airplanes without air traffic control, really. So having this coordinated security gives us a lot more value. And some of these values include being able to see more. So we can see different threats from different vectors within our environment. This then allows us to block more because we've got a lot more intelligence, knowing what's going on, what's not going on, what's a risk, what's a false positive. So we can block more as part of that. This also allows us to react faster. We can do building automation as part of this. And I'll talk about some of these automations that we do in a second as well. But where we see a threat on our endpoint security, for example, we could use that intelligence automatically to block it from our web security. So it allows us to react faster. And then also responding completely. So when we have this connected and synchronized solution, it allows us to respond completely at all vectors as part of that. And lastly, that automation, and we'll touch on automation in a little bit more detail as well, some of the new tools that Chris mentioned around our SecureX as well. There's a ton of work that we're doing around that. So in terms of uh, what we were doing uh, to integrate our security architecture, and this has been a journey for Cisco for the last few years. Talos, our threat intelligence in terms of defending better the back end system of this, this has been in place for the last couple of years now. So Talos, as I mentioned earlier, is the largest uh, threat intelligence, commercial threat intelligence agency in the world. Um, we see 180 to 200 billion DNS requests on a daily basis. We see 1.9 trillion email artifacts. So we're blocking 20 billion threats on a daily basis using our Talos intelligence. And this is the Talos intelligence that feeds across not just these top three that we're talking about today, our web security, our endpoint security, and our email security, but across the whole Cisco security portfolio. And that's what connects us together. So where we see that threat on one side, we'll then use that intelligence to protect it everywhere. So we have the largest footprint of telemetrics as part of that. And then on the front end, in terms of responding, we'll look at threat response, we'll look at a live demo of Cisco threat response, and then we'll talk a little bit about SecureX, but this is the tying in the front end to that. 
This has been around for about 18 months, so you may have seen it already, may have been using it. Um, but SecureX is uh, the new uh, evolution to that, and I'll sort of touch on that as well, which got released last week, as Chris mentioned. So but when we talk about how this works in real life scenarios, so if you, if you think about an example, um, uh, and we'll take Umbrella in this particular case. So uh, Umbrella, as you probably are aware, if you've uh, explored it or are using this today, um, uses DNS to give protection. And uh, while you're making the DNS request, we'll look at the security intelligence that we have and whether we should connect you or not connect you, or if it's something that we've never seen on the umbrella network or we don't have intelligence about it, what we call grey domains, we would proxy that connection for further inspection. In this particular example, it is exactly the same. So someone's clicked on a link, a uh, domain that we've never seen before on the umbrella network, um, globally. So what we'll do is we'll flag that on our system uh, and we'll proxy that connection for further inspection as this newly seen domain. So as your users obviously then using that particular website or domain, we're looking at that one obviously protecting them, but also building our intelligence as part of that particular new domain. So if we do see something malicious on that, we'll then update our umbrella cloud, which connected to Talos cloud, um, updates all of our sources instantly to be able to block that URL and domain across email and endpoints at the same time. And that's how that coordinated security effort works. Um, and it's all automated on the back end. So this is where Cisco Threat Response comes into it from the investigative side. So Cisco Threat Response is a tool that's uh, included free of charge and you can use this if you've got any of the security Cisco tools uh, already. So if you've got umbrella, endpoint security, Cisco firewalls, this is included as part of that. And the idea around this is it allows you to investigate and respond to threats quickly um, across your entire solution stack. It's designed to be super simple, uh, very easy to configure, a couple of API keys. It's designed to be super quick, and we'll look at a live demo of this in a second as well to show you how well that works. These are the key integrations that we have within Cisco Threat Response. So our endpoints and umbrella and email security we've already spoke about. But also, if you are using Cisco Firepower, Threat Grid, or Cisco Stealth Watch, you get to use Cisco Threat Response as part of this, and it integrates all of these together and many more coming along the line as well in terms of what we're adding on as part of that. So Cisco Threat Response essentially gives you answers and allows you to create actions for everyone from anywhere. So regardless of what role you're in within your organization, where you are situated uh, geographically, it gives you information at your fingertips to be able to get those answers in two clicks to what's going on in my environment. Have I been affected from this? So if we go back uh, in terms of this particular uh, scenario, when it was 7.43 a.m. on a Tuesday, we've got this text message from our CEO. I'm gonna replay this particular incident to you from our environment and show you a demo based on this. So this is um, Cisco Throw Response. This is a particular blog post, DNS Green Idols that. So I've done my Googling. I've come across this particular blog post and I've seen some information on there. There's a ton of information on here, so I can go on here, I can scroll. There's an executive summary in terms of what this particular threat is. It's giving me a bit more information, payload information, how this could be delivered in my environment, how this could have affected it. So I could go through all of this information and I'll be a little bit more clued up about this particular threat. We go further down, as we saw earlier, there's loads of more information. There's indicators of compromise further down here, which is the information that we can use as part of our investigation. So we can take all of this particular information, indicators of compromise. And bear in mind, this is DNS being nice, but this could be any type of threat. Um, we're using this particular threat because obviously we've injected this particular threat in our demo environment. But <clears throat> these are the indicators of compromise and you'll find these on any threat that you have. Um, and you can take this information, uh, and as we said earlier, take this to your different consoles, take it to your firewall, your endpoint security, and start that investigation. But I'm gonna show you how we do this in the Cisco world, in that connected world, in that integrated world. So I'll come to this blog post, and I know Cisco, I'm a Cisco customer, so I trust this blog post in terms of the intelligence on there. So I'm not even gonna read this blog post. I don't even need to learn how to read this blog post. We've actually built in a zero client um, plugin for a browser as part of this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna launch my plugin, and what this plugin does, um, and don't worry about the error, they just, this does come up as a demo environment, but what this plugin essentially is doing is scanning this particular web page for me, for those indicators of compromise. So those signatures, it looks for those web pages, any domains, anything that I can have that's useful within this blog post. And this doesn't have to be the Talos blog post, this could be any blog post, it will read the web page for you. 
It then gives you information in terms of what is Cisco's position on those signatures. So green meaning uh, on a Cisco estate, this particular domain is allowed. Red meaning this is blocked on a Cisco estate. So you wouldn't have access to that. Uh, or if you've got the right security tool, we've blocked it already. Gray is where we don't know much about that particular um, information. So these are obviously some internal IP address. So we don't know about your internal IP address, so we've not blocked that. And then you may have some information here, for example, some domains which are not blocked. So maybe like we've, uh, or you've come across a threat that Cisco have never seen before. So you could go to any one of these domains. Um, and my first part of the investigation is going to be, while I investigate this, I just want to stop everything. What's going on? So what I'm going to do, without even having to do or log into any of my consoles, I'm going to block this particular domain off my net, entire global network. What this does, it sends an API call to Umbrella uh, and blocks this domain across all of my estates. So no one can now access this particular domain while I investigate. So that's been blocked, um, and I know that's happened. Um, so what I want to do is I want to investigate a little bit more detail. Okay, so we know Cisco knows about these particular threats, but let's have a look. Has we seen any of these in our environment? So there's no point looking at the clean environment. We know snort.org is a Cisco domain. Obviously, this is a Cisco blog post, so let's pick that up. So what we're going to look at is the 10 malicious and the five unknown. Let's go investigate these into what's happened. And this automatically pulls that information or those indicators of compromise into Cisco threat response. And essentially what we're doing is using those indicators of compromise and sending it out to our different enrichments. And these different enrichments are as part of the different tools that we have within our um, Cisco Threat Response. So this Cisco Threat Response works on an API-based solution, so it connects to all of my different Cisco security tools. You can see the different modules I have plugged into here. So I've got some intelligence, I've got Umbrella, I've got my AMP, I've got my EDR solution, our endpoint security, I've got my Stealth Watch, I've got my Talos intelligence. So it's sending out to all of these different tools that I have. Um, these are the observables that are sending. So these are the uh, indicators of compromise that I uh, investigated. And straight away, what this has done is, is to, it's telling me what's going on in my environment. It's telling me where it's seen any of these environments. I can zoom into this, so it'll give you a bit more sort of graphical representation um, of where I've seen it. But the most important thing for us, I guess, is the targets. Like what, where in our environment have we seen this? And this will tell us exactly what's going on. So one, it's seen it on a Alexa Windows 10 device here. Seen it an IP address. This is an internal IP address. This is actually my firewall. Um, and it's also seen it in our ODNS identity. So this is Cisco Umbrella, used to be known as OpenDNS previously. And again, that will tell me where it's seen it and what identity I've got my AD integration as part of that. But before we dive into the device, um, I'll just show you what Cisco Threat Response, the additional information is. So obviously, we've done the investigation. It tells us how everything is connected. Um, it's seen this particular file. It's seen this domain, and it's come from this IP address. It's connected to this target, all that information. Great information that we've got there. It also gives us information about sightings as well within our environment. So where in our environment, and when did it see these particular signatures? And I can compare that to a global uh, representation. So do I, so I can identify. Is this a targeted um, threat or is it something that's global as we've seen it elsewhere? It just gives us a bit more sort of context to what's going on. But going back to that target, um, and obviously we've got an endpoint here, which is looks like it obviously it's been associated to this particular threat. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open up this particular endpoint. And the first thing I'm going to do um, is start isolation. So I'm going to isolate this device off our network. So this device, and you can see on the bottom right hand corner, now my uh, endpoint security has come back saying, yes, I've done this for you, so I've isolated it. But this device could be anywhere in the world, um, and essentially what I've done is just taken it off our network. It cannot communicate to anything apart from AMP Cloud, which is where we can make the remediation as part of this. So now I can go back to the business in that much time and say, hey, yes, we have seen this particular threat. Um, it was on one machine, uh, but we've taken the machine out of our network now, so it's not going to spread as part of that. So I've done the work and I can go back to the businesses with a confident answer that it was only one machine as part of that. But as an, um, a security specialist, obviously you want to understand how did this even get in my environment? So if we look at this and we've got obviously one gray file here, we may want to learn a little bit more about it. And this is obviously associated to the threat. So we've looked at the endpoints, we've obviously isolated that. And I want to know how this particular file got into my environment. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pivot the investigation around this particular file. It's going to send out all of that information again to all of my devices and those different enrichments that I have as part of this. 
and tell me where uh, else has seen this particular file. You now look at all of our different tools that we have. And you may see straight away as this comes back on a graph graphical representation, uh, without even having to sort of probably read all this, you can probably identify based on those logos um, and those icons where this particular threat came from. And you can see this actually come from an email and it actually goes into a bit more detail, tells you the message ID of that. So this, this customer is obviously using our Cisco email security. Um, so it'll go into a bit more detail, give you the message ID, who else was this particular sent to. You can then obviously go into our email security and then obviously make more um, instructions as part of this. Maybe we want to delete this message of that. We're building, building in more and more integration as a part of this, so you can actually do this from the Cisco threat response. So this gives you that information at your fingertips within a couple of clicks, as you can see. So that's great. So I can go back to the business and I don't need to worry now about having to uh, go back to the business with their, their unconfident answer. I can go back with the confident answer, say, hey, yes, we've seen this in one particular environment uh, and we've isolated that and we know where it's come from, et cetera, all that sort of stuff. And I did that in a matter of minutes, as you can see. So as part of the evolution in terms of our integrated security, uh, so as I mentioned, Cisco Throw Response was launched probably about 18 months ago. It's probably the most fastest uptake product in our environment in terms of customer usage. So in the background, we've actually been very busy in terms of like, how do we take this further and make it even easier for our customers to use Cisco security um, and obviously take advantage of these advanced security tools that they have rather than having all these different tools, but it's so complicated that you cannot even take advantage of some of these tools. And this is where Cisco uh, SecureX comes into it. And this got launched last week. Um, it actually goes into general availability end of this month. This is also going to be a tool which is included as part of your subscription for any other security tools that you already have. So if you do have umbrella, if you do have email security, this is included as part of that. And this just takes it a little bit more further. So it's not just around um, threat detection or threat response. It's actually full usability management visibility and that unified visibility across the entire security stack. And then we've also built in automated workflows as part of this. And you can see at the top of automation where you can build in automatic actions to what happens. And this is not just limited to Cisco tools. Obviously, in terms of the metrics that you get in the middle, the middle widgets, these are all fully customizable. But the idea around this is it allows you to collaborate better between SecOps, IT ops, and NetOps. And everyone can have their own different view on their different dashboards. Um, but you can build all these different widgets and different view planes that you may want on there to reduce complexity and maximize the benefits. And then obviously do threat hunting as part of this. So Cisco Threat Response is built into it as part of this as well. But we've also got third party integration into this. So it's not just obviously Cisco tools. So if you are using stuff like Splunk or any saw uh, tools or anything like that, this integrates into third party solutions. And then you can build automatic workflows as part of this. So if we see something on our endpoint security, maybe you want a workflow that does something on our web security, but also does something on Splunk for you. And you can build all these automatic workflows easy as drag and drop as part of that. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what we're doing. Um, and obviously there's a lot more we can do with the Cisco security uh, as part of this. All of these different tools that I've talked to you about today, including some more which are listed here on the left hand side are available on a free trial. As part of that trial, you do also get the Cisco threat response. You also get secure rates at the end of the month to trial as part of this. So do speak to your account team at Altima who can set you up with these trials as part of this. Um, and hopefully that give you a good overview of what we're doing as part of our integrated security, our part of our breach defense, um, and if you do have any questions, please do post it on the uh, webinar chat and obviously we can address them there. Um, but with that, I'd like to hand back to Chris. Chris, over to you. Thanks for that, Nish. Much appreciated. So, okay, so it looks like we're running 